Um, hello, everyone. This is Stephanie Schubert with Pacifica Radio, and I'm here with Carl Etnayer, and he's going to do a presentation, um, Automating Your Automated Systems. And um, this is our take two of this program. We tried one earlier um, <laughs> attempt, and the recording uh, kind of blew up on us. So this is take two, and take it away, Carl. Thank you. And we had a, a good conversation uh, during part of the presentation the other day and after the presentation. So I had quite a few people on the first time, and we hope we get quite a few people looking at th this as well. So I'm going to do this uh, through a slide presentation, and that slide presentation should be appearing on your screen right now. Do you see it, Stephanie? I do see it. Excellent. So automating your automated programming, how to manage 100 hours of automated programming in just minutes a week, plus how to use audio port to make it easier for stations to use your programs. This is my contact information and this entire uh, set of slides is available now at the Pacifica website or will be very soon. So who are we targeting? here. We're targeting those people in stations who are responsible for automated programming. Uh, this is how using the RSS feeds that are available at Pacifica's audio port site to greatly simplify the process of uh, using automated programming. And this is also for producers who are pr posting to audio port. This is how to make your shows easier to automate. And I think if it's easier to take in your show via automation, then it's probably more likely to be attractive to stations that are running automated programming. And this is also some suggestions for Pacifica on how audio ports uh, RSS can be improved. And this was uh, also for us. Uh, we got some valuable feedback the other day when we did, did the live presentation for people on, uh, on what we're doing so we can uh, do it differently. So as I said, I'm at WGDR. That's a station that's been around since 1973. You've been on the air since 73. It's a college community hybrid station at Goddard College in Plainfield, Vermont. Uh, we no longer have any student programming per se because uh, the students aren't on campus most of the time anymore. It's a low residency program. So we have a mix of syndicated and uh, community programming plus a uh, few times a week we have some music playing in the background from our world music playlist. So how automated programming changed WGDR. Before we started doing automated programming, we were on the air from 6 a.m. to midnight. That was a license condition. And it has allowed us to go 24 seven. It also makes uh, it a lot easier to do the just the 6 a.m. to midnight part, let alone the around the clock part, because when we we're not automated, we needed to have somebody at the station either hosting a show or just babysitting the recording and making the transition from one recorded show to another. This makes a more reliable listening experience because we don't have glitches where uh, people aren't available to be in the studio. We do have glitches sometimes with the automation. Uh, but uh, by and large, it's a more reliable experience for the listener. And uh, we think that this helps build audience. It also gives us a chance to present a wider variety of programming. Uh, we can go on overnight. So that's uh, six hours more per day that we can be on. And it gives us a higher control of programming. Uh, we don't have to be so desperate for programmers, volunteer programmers to, to come in. Uh, we can exercise more discretion over who we let in because we know if we have a time slot that uh, isn't occupied by a local volunteer programmer, it doesn't mean that we need to have a staff member in there babysitting that, that time slot. Uh, we can just slot in something from Pacifica. So I wanna give you an overview of the particular automation system that we use. I'm not here to sell any particular system. I would be the wrong person to do that because this is the only system I've ever looked at, uh, let alone used. Uh, it was a colleague of mine who reviewed different systems and for various reasons chose this one. But I just wanna let you know what we're using so that uh, uh, you understand that and you know there's 
probably, I hope that there are a lot of lessons from what I'm talking about today that work on other systems as well. So we use a, a company called Radiologic. It's made by Mac and Mind uh, out of Illinois. Uh, the two programs that work together are called DJ and Scheduler. We use iTunes. They are integrated with Radiologic in its um, all its iterations up to uh, the one just last week. Uh, the developer, Jay Lichtenauer, is working to liberate it from iTunes because in the next, uh, oh, this is important to, to mention, it's a Macintosh only system. In the next uh, Macintosh operating system, then iTunes will be built so differently that uh, he needs to take some functions that he's given over to iTunes in all the previous iterations and uh, build them into his software. Uh, the hardware that we use is an iMac. That's wrong. Um, the hardware that we use <laughs> is, is a Mac Mini. Uh, everything from Mac is is an i something or other, it seems. So I just reflexively wrote that. But it's a Mac Mini, and much okay. of the time we get on it via remote access software. The computer and the monitor and the mouse and the keyboard for that computer are all in the studio, the Air Studio. And uh, sometimes we don't want to go in there because there's a live programmer in there. Sometimes we want to be able to uh, make the changes from the comfort of our own office or our own home. So we uh, access the computer remotely. And BombGar is the software that Goddard College uses. Uh, TeamViewer is one that we've had experience with at WGDR. It might be the superior one, but BombGar is what the college wants us to use. So I'm going to assume that um, somewhere in the audience are people who don't know about the RSS feed at AudioPort or don't know quite how to use them. So uh, if, if you're not one of those people... That would be like, me, so you can, you can okay. direct it to me, Carl. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, and others can, who are more experienced can fast forward through this section of the presentation. Um, so if you go to AudioPort and you go to the page of any program, and NatureNote is uh, one originating from WGDR that uh, I help out on the production of, um, but that's just one that, that I picked. At the top of each program page, there's this button, RSS 2.0 Podcast. And when you click on that button, then the page looks something like this. You can, for now, you can just completely ignore everything down here and go up to what's in the address bar here and just copy and paste that text into whatever program you use for catching podcasts. This is iTunes. Uh, when you subscribe to an, a podcast in iTunes, this little box comes up. You paste that in there. You click OK, and then you're subscribed. And that means that every time something is posted, then it will come to your podcatcher automatically. Now, if you are a producer, then you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can see information about who has been accessing your program through iTunes. Uh, this first set of email addresses is people who have gone in and they have downloaded it manually by clicking on the download button here. Uh, under the podcast information, this is IP addresses of uh, folks who are subscribed to the podcast, and so their uh, machines automatically download it. You can see there's some problems with the dates down here. This program, which was posted in August of 2019, was allegedly downloaded in August of 2000 and August of 2001, 2002. But uh, at least you get a you don't get a sense from the IP address of exactly who it is, but you get a sense of how many people are seeing it that way. And as you can see for Nature Note, it's about a 60-40 mix of people who are downloading it manually versus uh, via podcast. I don't know how representative that is of Pacifica stations. So I want to give you an idea of how much work it takes to add programs manually to our automated playlist. And uh, this is a video in a different program, which will show you the process that we use. So I'll just uh, narrate what's happening in the video. Here we are. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is um, we're looking at the music playlists, and I've got this checkbox that set of checkboxes that I create for. Uh, I, I work on the weekends uh, for automating our programming for each of the shows over the weekend. Some of them are in the, the music playlist. That means we download them manually. 
and I'm about to look at Zucchini Brothers. Zucchini Brothers is a program that releases oh four, five, six shows all at once. We download them all at once, and uh, so I need to pick one for the right date. So I go to the Zucchini Brothers playlist, and that was a previous week's show. And then I go in the finder to Zucchini Brothers, where we have the collection of the shows. I pick the one for the current week. This was from last week. I drag it over to the iTunes playlist. I delete the previous one. And now there's just one there to choose from that will be set up for Saturday morning to play. So I check that off. Uh, the next one is sent by email. I'm not going to show you that here. Uh, but here's one that's also released in chunks of four, five, or six at a time, uh, New Dimensions. So I go to the Finder program once more for New Dimensions. Uh, this one, they don't label the dates in the file names, so I need to look it up. This is a PDF that I made out of the website showing uh, all of their current releases, and I look and see, ah, it's program 3461 right there. So knowing that, I can close the PDF file, and if I make a mistake, I try to log out of the remote access um, software, but uh, I can overcome that and say, yep, 3461, that's a one. But I have to go back over to iTunes and find the New Dimensions playlist and then go back to the Finder, drag the file over. Now it's there. Now I delete the previous one, so there's no ambiguity about which one is gonna play this week, and then I can delete that on the finder as well. So, and then I can go to, back to my check boxes and say, ha, ah, new dimensions. Let me just show you one more, because this is one that is uploaded each week to the web, and so it's a slightly different process. We access it through Firefox, we have wood songs as a bookmark. However, something got changed and the bookmark we used did not go to the place that uh, it normally goes to or what's normally at that uh, URL got, got changed. So then I had to look around and figure out, okay, where the heck do I wanna go? And eventually I'm gonna figure it out here. It's a WS Radio DL for Download Center. So I click on that and the top one is always the most recent one. And first I make another mistake, um, opening it up in Firefox, which I don't wanna do, so I close that, and then I remember to right click on it, so it will save as, and that will save it into the Wood Songs Radio Hour folder in the Finder. So I go to that. I open it up, I have the new one and the previous one, I get rid of the previous one, and then I'm ready to drag the new one over to iTunes, but first I have to find the Wood Songs playlist in iTunes, go back to the finder, drag it over, release it, get rid of the previous weeks, and we're good to go, and I can check that box off. So as you can see, there is a whole lot of a whole lot of things to do there. It, uh, it uh, is something that we used to do for each program, and I'm so glad that we don't do it for each program. There are still a few programs that we get in various ways uh, that we have to do that for. Uh, we get some people who email us links to files that we download, uh, so we're not completely using podcasts, but we would like to because it's so much more convenient. So here is an example of how we're going to look at uh, the programs that we get via the RSS feed from Audioport. And as you'll see, it's a much easier process. Basically, we're just going to check whether the podcast is in place. So here we are in mm -hmm. iTunes. We're looking at um, see, iTunes uh, up here 
It's set for the podcast, so we see all our smart playlists that include podcasts to allow us to keep them straight in our heads. We have these begin with capital P-O-D and then the name, because sometimes as we've been playing around, we have uh, regular um, regular playlists with things that we've downloaded manually for the same shows that we've gotten from Audioport. Um, and these, if it's hour one and hour two, we'll do something like a pen one and two. A full Moon Hacksaw is a two hour program, but each hour comes in four segments. So we have eight different smart playlists. But uh, here in this middle column, we just have a list of all the podcasts. The right hand column is the, um, that shows what episode or episodes are downloaded. Ideally, only one episode will be in there if we set it up right. So I'll start the video and you can see the process. Uh, we're going to look at the checklist for the podcast playlists. Friday, we rebroadcast Democracy Now! And we just check and see that that's there. So that's fine. The next one is Modern Jazz Today. We check that and that was downloaded the previous Monday, so that's fine. This is done on a, a Friday. Uh, the next one is the oldies time machine. It was downloaded the previous Sunday we see from there, so we, click, uh, we check that off. The next one is Confetti Park. Uh, it was downloaded today, so that's good to go, and so on. You get the idea. It's just a very simple process of look at our check sheet. What do I need to check? Look at our list of podcasts and check to see what day the most recent one was downloaded. And if it's within the time period that we're looking for, we just say good to go. Um, mm, now, cool. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, just the week before we did this, uh, Stephanie, the, um, the programmer behind Radio Logic said, I need to start building a podcast harvesting ability into. Uh, my radio logic actually he's, he made that decision long before but he released for the first time something that we could use uh, to do that and I'm just going to show you we don't have a lot of experience using it but I'm just going to show you what that looks like it's, it's very much the same in principle here's radio logic we mm -hmm. just have the two podcasts that we're testing in it we see democracy now and then letters and politics where it says selected episode uh, we just see, yep, this is the most recent episode. That's the one we want to see. We check it off. So similar process with that. Okay. Yeah. So I classify podcasts in from Audioport, and those are the only podcasts that we automated at this point. We tried with one other site, and, and there were problems. So we're just using Audioport podcasts at this point. There are easy odd podcasts to automate, and that's when – each show or, uh, or series in the lingo of Audioport has one segment per day per week. You know, when, as a producer, you upload a file. You can choose how many segments um, each program is going to have there. And this is just one segment per day per week. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. There are some that require an initial setup that takes some thinking through. But after that, they're easy to monitor. Um, for example, on the Full Moon Hacksaw, I showed that there are four segments per hour and two separate um, hours. Uh, but as long as the file name distinguishes between the files, like my program and then the date and hour one, and my program the date and hour two, and or the metadata distinguishes between the files, um, and it's best to have both. For example, in the comments and the metadata, you have that same information, then as long as that's set up, then you can generally tweak it to, to make it work with, um, with the older version of, of Radiologic before last week's edition, uh, iTunes. For example, for Full Moon Hacksaw, those four segments are all of different lengths, and so we sort them according to the size of the file. Uh, Radiologic uh, has not caught up with that yet, but the developer knows that we're looking for that, and uh, he's very fast in responding to, um, to requests and needs, so I expect that we'll see that in Radiologic soon. Uh, there are some cases that are unmanageable for us for podcasts. Um, for example, if there are multiple files for an audio port program, but there's no distinction in the metadata or file size, we, we can't automate that. We have to do that manually. Or if there are inconsistent distinctions in the metadata. So for example, 
uh, there was one programmer who uploads from our station, in fact, uh, who always distinguished uh, the hour one and hour two of his show in, I don't remember, the comments field in the metadata. And then one week he chose another field to put hour one and hour two in. And because our algorithm was set to look for it in the comments field, then it didn't find it and got confused. So we just had a chat with him, explained to him what we were looking for, and it's been completely reliable ever since. Uh, also, there are a couple programs where hour one and hour two are uploaded simultaneously to the same program, which means they have the same RS or the same series in audio port lingo, which means they have the same RSS feed, um, which means um, I, I think what happens is when you upload something, you can say, I want this to be available immediately, or you can use a calendar and say, yeah, put it on two days from now. I think these are pro programmers who are ahead of the curve, get their show all lined up and say, yeah, put it on tomorrow or the next day. And, uh, and you know, that's great to have the consistent upload day each week. We're looking for that. But when you have hour one and hour two uploaded simultaneously, what happens is the RSS feed only delivers one of them, the first hour. Uh, mm -hmm. That happens right now with All Mixed Up and Indigenous in Music. So, yeah, so if you're a producer, here is what we would really like to see to make your audio port upload RSS friendly. So make a schedule and stick to it. What, what day of the week you want to use and, uh, prep, and if it's a daily program, you know, what time of day, uh, preferably if it's a weekly program, what time of, of uh, day during that uh, day of the week as well. Uh, if you want to upload it in advance, that's great. You can use that uh, calendar function in the uploading uh, sequence of, of screens that you get from audio port and if you are uploading in advance please only have one episode per series per day uh, now it came across when otis mcclay was talking to us in the original version of this conversation uh, he would like to see as pacifica's uh, tech guy if your program has multiple segments like those four segments uh, per hour and two hours uh, from Full Moon Hacksaw, he would like to see each uploaded as a separate series. And I would say that would make um, the harvesting of the podcast bulletproof. We were able to handle it as it is, but it would make it much easier if each, up, each series has only one file segment. So that way it would be Full Moon Hacksaw. It would be eight different series each with a new file each week, and that's fine. He also mentioned some people have a promo for their show each week. Uh, that should be a different series. That should not be in the same RSS feed. And please label your files clearly with the file name, the metadata, and the audio port label all unique uh, to that particular file segment or that particular show and uh, you know, clearly understandable for a human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, producers, I want to let you know how we use your programs. I put this slide in because there's one show on Pacifica that we use uh, each Saturday. It's a reliable show. Uh, it's come to us for a long time. And we uh, uh, then one week it, it didn't show up. And so I wrote to the producer and said, uh, what's happened? Have you stopped producing the show? And she got back to us and said, uh, no, no, we're still producing the show. I just, just missed this week. Tell me what you need uh, from me. And, and so we did and it came as a revelation. Uh, so we don't preview the episodes. Uh, we rely on producers to ensure that they are FCC compliant, that they are FEC, Federal Election Commission compliant, that they are non-commercial. And there are DMCA playlists available of a specific consistent and consistent duration. So if it's 58 minutes this week, it should be 58 minutes next week. And they're published on time with full sound levels. Uh, know that we have a spot for you planned into our schedule each week. And we expect either new programs for that slot each week or every day if it's a daily program, evergreen programs, or if this is something that you're reusing, which is fine, it should be skillfully repackaged programming. Uh, don't send us a show in the winter that has a summertime weather forecast, for example, or yeah. refer <laughs> reference to, to current news from six months ago. Um, so here's something that we'd like to know how to do. And uh, Stephanie, I don't think we really touched on this in the conversation the other day. 
if there's somebody okay. who's not using AudioPort uh, so, and wants to get us files via RSS, what options are there to easily and inexpensively set up an RSS feed? Um, uh, Jay Lichtenauer from Radiologic told me that he really likes the program Feeder. That's a Mac program that costs 40 or $50 for the license, depending on what type of license you get. Is there some less expensive, in, less expensive way? That's for somebody who wants to, for example, one of our programmers sends us files each, actually several of our programmers send, uh, send us files every week for their shows. They don't intend them to be for any audience other than the WGDR audience. Uh, so they don't want to use audio for it. Uh, so they just upload them and we download them manually. Can we get that set up on an RSS feed? And I'm going to okay. mute, mute my microphone. I can't see easily how to mute my microphone. I'm just going to cough here. <coughs> and uh, <Bless> you. <coughs> thank you. <laughs> um, what Pacifica could do to improve the experience, um, provide more detailed and accurate instructions on how to set up a program for RSS. There are some there now, but they're rudimentary. And in the conversation the other day, Otis McClay, um, I characterized it as invited suggestions. He said he was demanding some text from me and I, I will comply with that demand. So uh, <laughs> before too long in the technical FAQ at the AudioPort site, uh, I hope there'll be more detailed uh, instructions. Uh, it would be nice to know how, who is downloading via RSS, uh, just so we can communicate with the person, uh, or just, you know, it's just nice to know what station it is. Uh, Otis said he tried uh, a few years ago and couldn't make it work. Uh, the, um, the IP addresses that he collected never corresponded to anybody who was downloading according to, to Audioport. Um, he's, he said he would look into investigating if he could get the right city, although it transpired during the conversation the other day. Uh, one of the participants was using a VPN. It looked like he was in Florida. We hoped that he wasn't in the path of Hurricane Dorian, but he got back to us and said, no, I use a VPN. I'm actually sitting in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm just fine. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Um, also, if Pacifica could make it impossible for multiple episodes of a feed to drop at the same time. That would get rid of that. That might get rid of that problem that uh, we're seeing with uh, indigenous and music and, and all mixed up where uh, we can only download one hour of a two hour show. So in conclusion, takeaway lesson is that uh, automation of automated programming save loads of time. Uh, you don't even have to do the checking of the programming uh, most of the time that I showed you. We do. We think it's a good idea. There are still glitches that can happen. But I have uh, looked at my watch and said, oh, my goodness, I forgot to check uh, to see whether everything was uh, set for what's on right now. And I turned on the radio, and it's just fine. And that just feels really good. Uh, it also relies on producers providing enough information and faithfully following conventions. So please do so. Okay. Well, thank you, Carl. That was very helpful. I think this is going to be a good reference. Okay. Um, I'm glad that Pacifica is having this uh, series of monthly conversations with, uh, with affiliates and among affiliates. So thank you, everyone, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next presentation. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Thank you. Take care.